I start paper pieces generally in the same way, using water-soluble graphite sticks, um, ink tents, blocks, or pencils, just graphite pencil, or any other mark-making tool that I have handy or close by. At this stage of painting, I'm not really thinking much about composition. I'm just making marks, just random marks, using random colors, and um, filling the paper up so that I can start adding paint. Mark making really loosens up my hand and helps me do looser brush strokes with my, with my brush. So. All in all, it's a win-win. So after I put the graphite and pencil or whatever onto my paper, um, my next step is to go in with a really wet brush and start adding gesso onto the paper, blending and um, softening those marks. You know, in the finished piece, um, you might not even see any of these marks, but the really cool thing about it is that I know they're there. So after I put the gesso on, I continue with layers of graphite or ink tents or whatever strikes my fancy at the moment, and I continue to fill the paper up with random marks. And then I might repeat the process with adding more gesso or I might start in with paint. So I generally start with a larger brush and just start painting. I'm not thinking about where I'm gonna place the color. I'm just painting, smearing some of the graphite in and watching the magic happen. At this point of the painting, I don't have any preconceived notion of what it's going to look like. Um, I've just put the first color onto the paper and um, I'm thinking about what my next move might be. Sometimes I add more marks. Sometimes I start in with a different color. So, you know, I just never know. I'm not really planning it out. I'm just one mark leads me into another and into another and into another and I'm just along for the ride. So I've added the second color into the painting and I'm just again moving color around and making some larger gestures on the paper, filling in the space, just actually doodling and pondering what my next color will be. So I'm adding the third color to the painting. It's a darker violet and the paint's still fairly wet on the paper. Um, it's a mixture of acrylic paint and gesso. So I'm blending and moving the darker violet around, making some bolder gestures and filling up the paper with organic shapes. In a short time, the paintings come a long way from the original marks on the blank paper to adding gesso and then adding the first bits of color onto the painting. Um, now I've added the third color and I'm ready to move on and add more of a pop. I'm not really sure exactly where the color palette for the finished painting is going to go. I do know that I just want something a little brighter. So I've come in with um, a darker red and added some gesso to it and I'm just playing with color next to color, blending, making shapes, and seeing what I'm going to end up keeping 
what I like and what I don't like. I'm placing some other colors onto my palette and I'm thinking the yellows are going to be exactly what I'm wanting to see in this painting so far. So I'm changing out brushes and um, deciding what yellows that I want to start adding. So I started with um, a really, really beautiful shade of... Um, nickel azo yellow mixed with a little gesso and um, really excited about what it's doing with um, the colors on the painting so far and then i'm coming back in with uh, a little viridian and mixing that in with the yellow so that really made my heart skip a beat and made me excited to keep going at this point when I work, I'm not very precise on where or how I'm placing the paint. I'm just scooting it around on the paper and mixing some of the colors because honestly, not a lot of this will be showing in the final painting. So I just keep pushing forward, blocking in areas, coming back in with more graphite and layering paint and marks. So I'm really excited about the bottom left area of the painting and how the marks and the paint are layering together. And I decided to come back in with just gesso on my brush and blend some of the paint together. It makes some of the most pretty soft colors when um, the paint is still wet and the colors start to shadow and shade. So I'm coming back in with some Van Dyke Red and gesso on my brush and I'm dragging it back through some of the wet paint. I'm bringing some horizontal marks in the painting filling in little areas so that I can carry the color all the way through the painting so that your eye follows it around. And at this point, I'm adding marks with some ink tents blocks. Um, I brought in um, a blue. And so I'm adding that up at the top and up at the bottom. And then I'm gonna come back in with a wet brush and start blending it. So I took a little bit of time to just sit and look at the painting and decide what my next move is going to be. I added green gold to my palette and 
started making some bolder gestures with my brush next to the viridian and pulling it across my paper, making some horizontal marks. Adding it next to the azo yellow and then pulling the wet brush through the bottom of the painting. Back in with more violet and um, mixing the violet with a little bit of the Van Dyke red. And then I'm gonna come back in and pull the brush across, moving some of the green gold and the violet together, which makes the yummiest brown color. And then coming back in with my graphite and making some raw marks in the wet paint. So this not only makes graphite marks, but it also blends some of the wet paint together, making really scrumptious colors and adding a lot of texture to your work. At this point with my painting, it's really starting to take shape. Um, I can see areas that I want to develop more, areas that I want to stay exactly the way that they are, and I can see my color palette forming more now. So this is where the painting really moves pretty quick sometimes. So I'm coming back in and I'm blocking some areas out with gesso and the paint is still wet so it's blending really beautifully with the gesso and not completely blocking out areas. You can still see them. They're still coming through um, but I'm just wanting to soften the color a little bit in some of the areas and gesso works really beautiful to do this. Continuing to block in areas, adding some viridian at the bottom of the painting, is informing me that um, I'm looking for a brighter pop of blue. So this got me to thinking about adding some really beautiful turquoise.
So I added in some warm gray and I'm blocking in some shapes. And taking a step back and looking for little areas that I could add some solid color to. The paint is still wet, so it's blending. So the violets are blending in with the warm gray. The azo yellow is adding a little bit of color there. And I like it. It's kind of a muted gray violet color. So I start pulling that into other areas of the painting as well. I love scraping back through the wet paint with a very tiny, thin, well-worn brush that's just almost a stick with just a few bristles in it, but it gives the most luscious and gorgeous marks as you pull it through the paint. It's one of my favorite tools to use. So I'm coming back in with a little paint on the brush stick and just adding some texture and some lines and some movement by dragging it through. It's a fun process and it's like magic every time. It's always different, it's always new, and I never really know what's going to happen. That's the magic about painting. So now I've come back in with some of the Van Dyke Red and pulled it through the painting across the yellow and across the gold green. Still moving the paint around. Still pondering the turquoise. So here comes the beautiful turquoise and I'm so thrilled to see it next to the yellows and next to the violets and next to the viridian green. It's just really making my heart sing. So I'm blocking in some larger shapes with it. thinking about where I'm going to place it.
I'm adding some gesso into the wet paint and dragging the brush across the paper, pulling some of the color into each other and blending. I'm also coming in with my graphite pencil again where the paint's a little drier and adding some heavier marks. I love the detail that the graphite gets, um, that the graphite makes when the paint starts to dry and it becomes more visible. So I'm coming back in with gesso on my brush and I'm blocking in some shapes, tightening up the composition, planning areas that have a little more detail, and identifying areas that I may just leave the way they are. Um, my moves are more intentional at this point and it's very much like trying to put a jigsaw puzzle together. Stacking shapes on top of one another and adding dimension layer by layer.